everyone, it's Benjamin Schumann again. This is the third part of our video series on reinforcement learning in AnyLogic. And in the past two videos, I explained what reinforcement learning is, and I gave you a brief overview of the actual AnyLogic model I built. That is basically a, a learning technology demonstrator of how to use a simulation tool to em employ reinforcement learning. In this video, I want to go deeper. I want to look into the actual model and show you the different agents and their functions that we use to make this happen. So let's have a go. Let's have a look at the model. You saw it previously uh, running already, so it looks like that. There's a truck moving about trying to find a target and he's moving around uh, quite an arbitrary, simple environment of cells. Let's look at the actual AnyLogic file there. So obviously we have uh, a main that has all the all the user interface stuff with the legend. We're not going to worry about that too much. We are more interested in this video in the two agent types that we're using. We use cells and we use a pathfinder. Let's look at the cell first because that is making up the individual cells in the eventual model. So a cell is an agent in and of itself. AnyLogic does actually offer you to simulate in a cellular uh, automaton, but it's not applicable for, for this model because we need to know, each cell needs to know stuff about itself and that's not possible with the default setup. So we are going for a usual uh, 2D environment and we have our cell agents as they're displayed here. They are visible with a, with a big fat square and we also use a little line to show the um, the learning that's going on, that the truck is doing, but we'll come to that. Um, the first thing to note is each cell is characterized by one parameter, that is storing its type. What type of cell is it? If you look at the model, there are essentially three types of cell. Either you're a normal white cell, nothing special about you, or you're a great gray cell, that's you are being a wall, or you're the golden cell, then you are the actual destination. You only exist once. And we store that using an option list. That's a, a file format that I find really, really useful in any logic, um, where you basically specify for one dimension the different options that this dimension can have. And our dimension is the cell type, and it can either be a normal cell, the target, that's the destination, or a wall. And we will see in the next video how this is actually set up and working out. In this video, I want to just explain the details of the model. Each cell also has two connection objects or linked to agent objects. One is the connection to my truck. So this is only active connecting to a pathfinder truck if the, if the truck is on that cell at the moment. Otherwise, there's no connection happening. And then there is a persistent uh, link to agents that stores my neighbors. So that includes only your feasible neighbors, actually. So if you're this white cell here, or let's take a better one, if you're this cell down here, your feasible neighbors are not the gray ones around you. Uh, it's only those two up here. And these are stored in the connection my, neighbor, my neighbors object. And we'll see how they're set up in the next video. Then the cell stores a very important data object, a collection for Q values. So the Q value is essentially uh, the, the um, thickness of those lines. So if you are a cell down here, you will have two Q values, one to the cell above you and one to the cell to the top right. So this cell is set up as a linked hash map to where the key is the different cells around you, your fees and little neighbors, and the value is the actual Q value. That's the, the thickness. And that is updated while the model is training. So you see while the model is training that these line thicknesses also, also change. And then the cell has three functions. It can return to you the reward for going to a specific other cell, to a destination cell. So it's basically asking, if you're the cell down here, what is the reward of going to this cell? And there are two special cases. Either the cell you want to go to is a normal cell, and then we basically hard code 
uh, a little penalty is minus one times the distance to that destination divided by 10. So it's typically 0 0.1 or something. So a small negative value, unless you are one of the neighboring cells to the destination, and then moving to that destination gives you a huge reward. I set it to 100. Again, that's just hard coded. There's a function to retrieve an array list of all your feasible neighbors. So that is essentially looping across all your neighbors. And I'm oh, sorry, this connection object is actually all eight neighbor cells. I was, I was wrong about that. So this basically just stores all the eight neighbors around you and then the feasible neighbors sift through those eight and only returns those that are normal cells. And the last function is the uh, get me the cell around me that has the highest reward of going there. So it loops through all the all the feasible neighbors in the Q values collection and basically gets you the one that has the highest Q value. So practically that means, uh, let's find a good example. Mm, if you are if you are this cell, give me the cell with the highest reward. You can see there are like four green lines going out here, but the green line to the top cell is the thickest one. So it's going to return this cell as the cell with the highest reward. And again, we'll see in the next video how those functions actually come alive. I just want to go through the details in this video. So let's talk about the second agent class in this model, and that's the Pathfinder or Truck class. And this one is very simple. It just has a truck animation. That's the little truck we see moving around the environment. It has one connection object that connects it to my cell. And that is the equivalent to the uh, con my truck connection in the cell. So whenever a truck is on the cell, he's connected to that cell. So he knows where he is. He has one little function move to a given cell. So that's when he's actually going to that cell. He has made a decision and he's going to go there. In, if he's in, if we're still in training mode, what he's doing is he's also updating the Q value of actually going there and he's updating our little variable reward. So by actually going somewhere, you weep a reward or you get a little penalty. And then after leaving, obviously he's disconnecting from the cell he's just left. Um, if he's, if we are not in training mode or just in general, we then just jump to that cell and connect to that new cell. And then, as I said, if we are in training mode, we call this other function update Q value. Now that is a little more involved. Um, we basically say the truck wants to go from an origin cell to a destination cell. And he gets the reward for actually just moving from the origin to the destination cell. And that is, on, sorry, on this model that equates to, if I'm here, what is, and I want to move here, what is the current green value, the current thickness, what's the Q value? But then he also looks, well, if I'm going up there, I've already made the decision, what is going to be the highest Q value from this cell going forward? So if I'm in this cell, I could go back to the original cell, I could go to this cell, I could go to this cell or up here. And he's looking, what's the highest value of my subsequent next step? Obviously in this case, it would be going further up. And he looks at the, um, at the Q value of that, discounts it by the Bellman factor. That's one of the settings that's just hard coded to 0 0.8 at the moment and says, well, let's take the, the reward from going from, from my current cell to this cell and update it with 0 0.8 time, times the highest reward for going through the subsequent cell. And that's how this back propagation works over time. So when we restart the model and make it slow, at some point he's gonna, he's gonna find his way to the destination, which is super hidden here at the moment. Um, and what you'll see is there's going to be one big green bar after just one training pass. And after two training passes, the bar will propagate one cell further. After three, it will propagate further and so on. And that's what this function is doing. It is looping through all feasible cells from the destination that you're supposed to go to anyway. It gets the highest Q value from that destination to any possible feasible uh, future cell. And then it discounts that with the with the Bellman discount factor, which is 0.8 in this case, 
and sets the queue value from its current origin cell to the destination cell it's going to go to anyway. So it updates the, the queue value there. And that's, you know, that's the most magical bit. That's the, that's the toughest bit of the whole model. And then next, in the next video, we'll actually see how the model becomes alive, how we uh, implement those um, populations and what the events are doing and how it all folds together. Thanks a lot.